My name is Ruth Asha Manda, Mrs. I was born on 16th September 1972. I come from Zimba, that's the northern part of Malawi. Uh, I'm a wife to a pastor. <laughs> uh, I have a bachelor's in human resource management, but I also did a diploma in law with the University of Malawi. I'm currently working for Governance Agenda, Justice and Development Center as an executive director. Uh, you know, as a country, women in Malawi are representing a 52% of the whole population. And yet, if you consider that the seats in the private sector, public sector, political sector, we are still uh, under, we, we are not being utilized, you know, we are not well represented. Most women are staying at home, uh, raising up their families. Uh, we have not been exposed enough to any public life. I think, I think that's an injustice. Because uh, maybe from my, my religious background, if I look at women in the Bible, they've been doing a lot, you know? They're the ones actually who uh, were first told that Jesus is risen. So, the, so they're the first disciples, we can do it. But what we have seen in Malawi is like uh, uh, we, are, we are kept to stay at home, raising a family, and not being exposed enough to a uh, public life. Vera Chirwa, she's the director of Malawi Kera. I think that's the first uh, civil society organization in Malawi. Even at the time when uh, the one party system of government was very strict in terms of. Uh, organizations such as civil society organizations. But here she came, of course she was uh, on exile uh, because of political reasons, but when she came in, she stood up and established this organization and which has tested the, the test of time up to now. So that's, that's my inspiration. I'm so motivated with her courage. The second one is uh, on political ground. Patricia Cariati. Oh no. Since she managed to take that position of being a member of parliament, up to now, she has not let that opposition to any man. She has maintained that position up to now. Then I tend to wonder why. Then when we look at the way she interacts with the communities where she comes from, she's so good. So that motivates me. With a lot of uh, challenges, uh, Ethnic background, religious barriers, cultural barriers, you know, um, the poverty levels, the literacy levels, uh, but also the gender roles as a woman. Of course, we are getting there, but it is extremely difficult for one, a woman to aspire for that leadership position, you really have to divide your time. You really have to be responsible enough in terms of planning, how do you look after your family. At the same time, you give enough time to whatever engagement you have been involved with. So I think it's, it's a multiple challenges. The religious issue, cultural issues, maybe support from your husband, for example, your family members, uh, the poverty levels, uh, can you be able to compete with men in that position? Because uh, if you want to be a leader, you need to uh, give us some influence. So if you are not uh, rich, you don't have any economic muscle. Hmm. For you to be able to at least maybe mobilize people to support you is very, very difficult. I'm such a woman that uh, maybe uh, I'm just being privileged. Uh, I, I did my second education at uh, Kamsa Academy. I was uh, lucky enough to have this full scholarship for, for me to be able to uh, go through the secondary education. When I finished my secondary education, uh, I was picked by the European Union. It was uh, a pioneer program and a paralegal training course. I was also privileged. Then when I, that, at that time, I joined Minister of Justice as a public prosecutor. I worked for Minister of Justice for three years or so. Thereafter, 
I joined civil society organization. In fact, I've worked for civil society organization for over 14 years now. So even through that uh, journey, as I was looking with civil society organization, I was just being identified that even I may, I may look so young and small, but maybe the confidence that I have when I am uh, coordinating programs, community programs, I think that motivated some donors, so they sponsored me. So I did diploma in law at Chancellor College, uh, uh, KTS for DFID under the Malawi Primary Justice Program. I also did the Bachelor of Arts, Human Resource Management, still more with the same uh, scholarship. Then even now, I've also been identified by UNICAF. I'm a current, I've, I've currently enrolled with UNICAF for Masters in Business Administration. So I, I'm looking at, at myself as uh, I've just been lucky in terms of my intellectual capacity because all throughout my journey, I've had someone to sponsor me. I think that's the challenge that we have as a country. Um, if we cannot do it at home, then who can also maybe uh, support us, you know, financially, so that we progress and get exposed. Apart from the academic exposure, I've also been exposed in terms of conferences. Uh, you may, <laughs> this other time I was looking through my certificates, I laughed. I went to Cape Town and uh, uh, studied the Human Rights uh, uh, Trust of Southern Africa, KTS of Hebrews. That was 2007. So when I got the funding under the Women Empowered for Leadership program, I said, oh, that was, this is heavenly inspired because I was already picked at that time. So and another area that I, I, may see, I see myself uh, uh, towards my progress is if we have that support, financial support, if we have that support in terms of maybe coaching, mentorship, if we have role models that they live the test of time, that are sustained, that are supported, we can do it.